Welcome back all to the next leg of our journey here. So we just finished up with uh, the flower thing and uh, we're at Eagles Bridge and we're heading out of there northbound. So just let the horse do the work, follow the road. <clears throat> Okay, first area of interest we're going to come to is this tree with this boulder. And you guessed it, that will be a Karoxid. Sometimes you'll get a beetle on this tree, by the way, so you might want to walk, don't run. Uh, no such luck today, however. Okay, there we are. Just to kind of show you on the map what we're doing now, we're going to be heading northbound, more or less. We might be zigzagging uh, either side of that river, but that's the general idea. All right, folks, we're going to grab our horse, and the reason I parked back here where this fork is in the road is we're going to take a real sharp right, because there's an area of interest I want to point out, and that is the skull enemy nest that we're about to come to. And the reason is... Not because the treasure chest in here is so great, but more because the bow that that Lizzle is holding is a long distance bow. It is a phonics bow. So uh, this is awesome because, you know what, I'm going to start using up another type of arrow here. This is really awesome because uh, if you get, you know, really, if you tend to overuse your long distance bows, which a lot of people do, this is a place you can come to. And after every blood moon, you will have a new one. Where did it go? Is it up there? So yeah, after every blood moon, that bad guy will respawn, and so will the phonics bow. Uh, so since we're on the subject, I might as well tech refresh my inventory here. Alright, so yeah, you might want to mark that on your map, you know, with a bow or whatever, so that you know. In the future, you can come back and get a fresh one. Of course, you gotta wait for the blood moon, but uh, all is good. And I know we're kind of flying blind right now, so just uh, follow along on your maps as best as you can. Nothing. Nothing. All right, from here we're going to venture out into that swamp where all those trees are. You can't really miss it. It's huge. And what I'm looking for is a, a glistening, swirling pile of leaves. There it is right in front of me. And this is doing a figure eight. So uh, you can try to run and catch it, but uh, just try to head it off at the pass. It's not going super fast. And there we are at the moment. From here, we're going to head further out into the swamp land. Uh, there's a series of three trees right over there. Uh, where are you at, horsey? And it's going to be off to the right of where that shrine is. And here we are. And be careful that the horse doesn't come too close, otherwise he'll start eating the apples, and that's not a good day. So just like any other series of three trees, match the fruit. Oh, nuts. Now remember I said you could get your arrows back as long as you're standing on the proper side of the fruit? I don't think it works with shock arrows though, unfortunately. Okay, so much for that. Now as you're approaching this next shrine, there's going to be some Lizzle trouble in the area, so do be aware of that. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to try to ignore them, but I do, I do recommend you guys take the time to kill these guys. And I'm just here to activate the travel gate for now. So 
So I'm going to head back toward Kakriko Village at this point, and that's marked by those great big tall funny looking mountain peaks. And I'm looking for this uh, lonely tree. Ooh, I got a shock bat, and those are important. Hey, where did you go? Excuse me. Game is glitchy, I'm telling you. Oh, there he is. Okay, so these are important because we need the materials. So anytime you see these uh, electric bats, always take the time to get them. You're going to need 15, I repeat, 1-5 of those materials for future suit upgrades. Okay, so we got another Croc suit up here, as you might have guessed. He's a little faster on his feet. Come here. Settle down. Ah! He got me. Alright, so that's about where we're at now. Okay, there's one more croc seed in the area, and that is going to be back toward Kakriko Village. There's a cave over here somewhere, uh, and you can only get there through a waterway. There's also a treasure chest here. I'm not going to get it right now because it's going to be a soldier's broadsword, but I will show it to you guys because we are getting bonuses on our weapons now, and that's a good, good thing. Uh, we were only getting bonuses on traveler's crap before. Now we're getting bonuses on soldier's crap, so that's a good indicator that we're yet again ready to progress in the ranks of enemies and weaponry. Base level weapon drops is what I like to call that. Okay, so out here in this lake, you're going to see treasure. Where are you at? That one's rather deep, so you have to be kind of almost right on top of it to get to it. Alright, further out you're going to see another treasure chest. Come on. So now we're going to head over toward that opening, that cave opening there, and we will have our Karak Seed. You might see some Staminoka Bass in here, but mostly this is going to be Armored Carp. Don't know why, it just is. Ready to go, Link. You were supposed to jump, dude. Genius. I am not seeing any stamina. That's a pity. Ooh, I got a mighty carp, though. Might as well scoop him up on the way. Not one stamina bass. Lots of high roll bass, though. Okay, so your typical apple in the offering bowl here. Alright folks, just for a quick travel, we're going to work back to that travel gate we just activated. And I don't really like to go into the shrines until I get four of them. Uh, then I go do them all at once, but you guys are welcome to go in there if you want, but that'll be its own separate video anyway. For now, I just want to continue on mission, heading toward the Karak Forest. Gathering croc seeds and treasure as we go. Okay, my horse should be around here somewhere. Where'd you go? What's he doing down there? Did I ride him over there? I guess I did. What am I holding right now? That's not good. 
Oh yeah, your horse will fight back too. That's kind of funny. Your horse will kick and buck and uh, injure these guys or take a little damage off of them for you. Okay, so keep your eyes open. Okay, so now we're going to head right back directly toward the west. We're going to catch back up with that road. This is where we got the long distance bow. Uh, that croc seed we picked up is right around here somewhere, the boulder in the tree. That's where we're heading back to at the moment. And you might see some more electric bats along the way, so be sure and stop and kill those when you see them. And they mostly come out at night, so hopefully it's nighttime hours here for you guys. And no such luck with the electric bats at the moment. Hopefully you're having better luck on your end. Okay, so here we are, main roadway. The horse should automatically want to veer left at that fork, and that's fine, that's where we want to go. And we are now heading into our, uh, what is this called, wetland stable. And we've already been here, we've already done that, but, uh, what we didn't do is get all the big hardy radishes. So I'm going to do that real quick. The top of this little hilltop here, there should be one at the very peak of it. And I do like to mark these on my map. Just for quick reference, when uh, I know there's a blood moon coming and I'm trying to hurry up and get a whole bunch of them. And those are worth five extra hearts apiece. So you throw five of those into a cooking pot, that's already 25. During a blood moon, you end up with 26 extra hearts. You can't beat it. Okay, so right down here at the river's edge, there should be a dude staring at the water. Talk to him, that'll activate a side quest. And really all it's doing is, oops, is kind of uh, directing you to pull the treasure chest up out of the water. Okay, why isn't it working now? That's what I get for being in a hurry. Oh well, no big deal. So normally that would activate a side quest. You open the treasure chest up, you tell them what it was, and side quest will clear. I might as well tech refresh that. Okay, so apparently it did still work. Okay, and that bad boy was, like, right here. Okay, so now we're going to venture into the woods right behind the stable here. Uh, yellow rune will kind of help you to see what's going on. Now, bear in mind there's a croc seed in the forest. If it's rainy, you won't be able to get it. Uh, so if you have good, dry, clear weather, take advantage of that. And we're going to go right into the heart of the forest. And what I'm looking for is a rock. There it is. Go ahead and lob a fire arrow to it. Why am I using a soldier's bow? That's my thunderstorm bow. So we are due south, exactly due south of the stable itself. Alright folks, keep that yellow rune going for you. Uh, what I'm looking for are big hardy radishes, and I just found one. You're also going to get lots of mushrooms in here for a stamina, both endura and green stamina. And regular, ooh goody. And, of course, the regular, uh, regular hardy radishes as well. So there should be a total of four big hardy radishes nearby. 
Uh, we just found two right away. We got the one on top of that hill, so I'm still looking for one more. There you are. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, there's some more goodies to be had here in the forest. I recommend you guys pilfer this forest for all it's worth. Uh, give Get everything the game has to give you. I always recommend doing that. Even if you already have a lot of it. You can always use extra stuff for extra cash flow when need be. In fact, there should be some more regular hardy radishes nearby. Yes, sirree, Bob. Those are worth three extra hearts apiece, so they're not a bad score. Of course, I just really like the big hearty radishes, because that really bumps up your overall extra heart meal. Alright, folks, that's pretty much it for this little spot. Let's go ahead and continue back on mission. And from here, we're going to head out of here going uh, this direction. Now we're going to cross a bridge. And there's quite a bit to do, so let's get to work. We're going to get on the horse and get on the pathway here. And we're going to let the horse do the work. If it's not raining, I recommend getting this uh, stone pillar climbed. I knew I wasn't going to make that. Alright, so now we're going to get back on the main road heading west. Right across that bridge there. And that's the way the horse wanted to go on its own anyway. We're just going to get back on and get it going the right way here. Okay, right underneath here is a little ledge with a rock to pick up. That is a croc seed. Come on, Link. Sort it out, dude. There you go. Alright, stay on path here. Stay on road. And we're going to veer left where you see that big column of smoke coming up. And it's going to get on another little pathway here, but we're, we don't really want that. What I'm really looking for is these two big tall stone pillars here. And we're back into map viewing area, so that's going to be super helpful. Go away. Okay, this one is easy to climb. So what we're going to do is push this rock off, or hit it off with stasis, and we're going to get it into that where that little divot is. So just go ahead and get yourself lined up here as best as possible. It's not probably not going to go in on the first attempt, but we're going to try anyway. So go ahead and freeze that sucker with stasis. A one-handed weapon will do the job, so that will be a knight's broadsword in my book. One hit, folks. That's all you need to get it off the ledge here. And if you're lucky, it'll go on in the divot on its own. Of course, I'm not lucky. Alright, back to the horse we go. Uh, there's a treasure chest on this next really tall stone pillar. I'm not going to make the climb because it's just a giant boomerang. But if you need it, go for it. I will go ahead and mark it for you on the map, however. So there we are, that's where the Korok seed was, that's where the treasure chest is, and that's where we are on the map. So what we're going to do now is head toward this bottomless swamp, kind of, sort of. We're going to go, first, we're going to go toward this little uh, hilltop here. Now be careful because there's going to be a guardian running around out here. Uh, we're going to kill that guardian, and we're going to kill, uh, kill a Hanox, who's also right by. Make good use of the attack power meal that we're about to eat and kill both. So there's that little hilltop I said we were going to go to. 
But first things first, we need to get this guardian out of our way. Just like before, folks, as soon as he locks onto us, stand still. Don't be running around out here, otherwise he's going to keep running around himself. So don't forget to arm up, suit up, and eat up. Get your guardian weapon out. A multi-arrow bow it seems to work the best to make sure you get the eye shot in. Get him stunned. And, uh... You know what? Since we're not using a bone weapon, I'm going to go ahead and put that Phantasma armor on and save the meal. So stand still. He'll stand still. Get the eye shot. One leg at a time, remember? That'll keep him good and stunned. And get extra monster parts out of the deal. Hey, where are you going? Why didn't you stun? If that happens, same plan, stand still. One leg at a time. Keeps them good and stunned. When you get all the legs dead, wail on them, finish them off. And you might even hear the uh, Hinox right now snoring away. Where are my parts? They're kind of hard to see in the grass sometimes. Now I'm getting tons of ancient chats, go figure. Okay, I think I got them all. Okay, you should be uh, coming up on your Hinox by now. Now, you don't have your stealth on, keep that in mind. I'm going to get back in my uh, Ganon, Phantom, Greaves here, armor, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and get my bone weaponry going for me again. And at this point I will consume a longer lasting attack power meal, probably in 8 minutes or so. 8 minutes, 20 seconds should do the job. I don't think he has leg guards on, so that's a good thing. Actually, he has one, so make sure you stand on the soft side of him, right next to the meat of his thigh here. And as long as you have that attack power meal working for you with the disguise bone attack up and the bone weapon, that was my alarm, sorry about that, and the bone attack weapon, you should get him dead before you can even stand up. All right, let's see what kind of crappy weapons we got here. Nothing I really want. So I'm going to mark that on my map for later hunting point of reference. Okay, from here, I'm actually going to travel right down here somewhere. There's another croc seed. Uh, and I don't like to bring the horse for this one because it's an apple deal, and he tends to eat your apples before you can get the croc seed. I just need to locate it. Bear with me. I think I just found it. Typical apple in the offering tray. Come on, Link. Work with me here. Alright, folks. At this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, call our horse. We're going to head back toward that pin we placed a while back at that little hilltop. Don't forget, at the uh, decayed wagons, you got... This one might be too far underground, I'll check for you. Yeah, I think it's too far underground. Okay, so no... Unfortunately, no gemstones at this one. And now you know. Okay, we're almost done with this little segment here. Go ahead and come in toward that uh, hilltop. And we're going to want the steep face because there's going to be a false wall that we have to blow up with some thorny vines. And you don't really need to use a fire arrow or anything. You can just kind of climb up to the false wall and go off to the side up above. And I like to just lob a bomb over. 
And you should hear the wall blowing up if you don't try again. It's not working. That's frustrating. But there's also a car seat up here anyway. Alright. There it goes. Don't know why it wasn't working before. Maybe I was just aiming wrong or who knows. Alright, so you got lots of good gemstones in here. And some uh, bat trouble, of course. As is most caves. And I can't remember if there's a beetle. I don't think these are luminous, so probably not. Alright folks, that pretty much wraps up this little segment of video. Uh, there's another Hanox and another Karoxid over here. Uh, I don't know if I have enough time left on this 30 minute segment or not. I'll try to get you over there, we'll see what happens. Okay, so we are here. You are here. And we are going over here. Right here in all these little trees, you're going to see, barely, you're going to see a segment of three trees. That's where we're heading. So I'll put a stamp right next to that, or excuse me, a pin. So it's pretty much north, northeast of our current position. Okay, and once again, you're not going to want the horse too close, otherwise it'll start eating apples. That's never a good day. Come on. Ow, jerk. Jerk face. Okay, there's another Hanox over here. A yellow rune to help you see it. And that attack power mule is still working for me, so I'll just go ahead and finish it off and finish him off. And make sure he's down on the soft side without the leg guard. Right next to the meat of his thigh. And spin away. Alright folks, that concludes this segment of video. Uh, when we come back up, let's meet back up at the uh, wetland stable.